Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at a great feature in rules called breakpoints. Usually when you're using Fiddler, you're just watching traffic go back and forth, trying to diagnose missing files or other issues. The breakpoints are going to give us the ability to stop processing of either a request or a response so we can make modifications to it before it's transmitted. So that's what we're going to focus on here. First thing I wanted to mention, if you've used Fiddler before, you get a lot of background traffic of other services running on your machine that are being recorded by Fiddler. For the video purposes, I used another great feature in Fiddler Everywhere called the filters. I have a filter already set up, which will only capture traffic that I specifically want to see. If I click here, I'm going to open the filter editor. So I just said, if any of these conditions are met, I have two specific hosts I'm using for this talk. So I'm just checking if the host is equal to the first or the second, it will actually show the traffic. Otherwise, all of the other background traffic that would normally be seen won't be recorded. So I'm just gonna have that on here to make it simpler to focus on what we want to see. For this video, we're going to use a fictional travel website that I happen to create with Bootstrap just to show you some of the things that we can do with breakpoints. Typically, when I'm using Fiddler, I'm looking at requests that are being made between the browser and the server, often trying to troubleshoot why something is not working as I would expect. I've made a request for the page, and we'll look into Fiddler everywhere and see some of the requests between the browser and the server to get this to render. We can see the set of requests that are made between the browser and the server. The first is the call just to get the actual web page contents in HTML. Then as the browser is parsing that, it's looking to download additional resources. We can see one of the advantages of using a tool like this. I have a 404 because I do not have a favorite icon set up for my site. But other than that, all of these things are being requested and we get successful 200 status codes down the right hand side. If you've done any work with web performance, you might be familiar with HTTP compression. So the idea is there are a lot of text files, CSS, JavaScript, HTML that are text based that the browser and server, the browser can communicate to the server and say, I know how to handle compression. So please make the response smaller by compressing it using various algorithms. I'm going to select the first request for the HTML and I'm going to go to the inspectors view. So we can now see the raw request between the web browser and the server. So the first line just says I want to do a get and I want to get this URL. You'll see a list of headers. So these are additional things the browser is sending to the server to give it some context about what the user agent is. We'll look at the header that indicates that the browser can handle various compressions. So if I scroll down, what we're looking for is it's called accept encoding. The browser is telling the server it can handle four different types of compression with the response. And if we look below, we'll see the response that came back from the server. The first line, we get the 200 OK, meaning everything executed OK. And as we saw with the request, there are response headers that the server is sending back to the client. The one we'll notice is content encoding saying gzip. So when we looked above, the browser said it handled those four algorithms for compression. The server chose to use compression and chose specifically to use gzip. If I scroll down further, and this is what it looks like by default, I can just turn off that encoding, and now I can see the actual page HTML as we would expect. Now we're going to start over and take a look at using rules to set up breakpoints. So instead of just watching traffic go back and forth, I actually want to make a modification to the browser's request to the server and see how it would behave differently. The first thing we're going to do is set up a new rule. So I'll go to add rule. So I'm just gonna call it breakpoint on site request. 
I'm going to leave the when all these conditions are met any number of times. I'm looking for when a method get is requested. I want to see that get request for a specific URL, which would be the home page for the first website. In this case would be this. The action I want to have occur at that point is a breakpoint. So I'm going to set a breakpoint. And in this case, I want to have the breakpoint occur before it sends the request to the server. So again, Fiddler is sitting between the browser and the server. Now when the browser sends a get request for that specific URL, I'm telling Fiddler, please set a breakpoint and stop before you pass that request to the server. I want to make some modifications to that request and see how the server might behave differently. I'm just going to hit save. We make a request again, and if we go to Fiddler Everywhere, we went to the browser and issued the request again for the home page, and we'll see there's an indicator that this is now sitting waiting on a breakpoint. So I can click on that request. You'll see that it shows it's paused. I'm going to go to the raw view, and I'm simply going to delete the line that says accept encoding. So at this point, when I hit to continue, the request got sent on to the server, but now it looks like the browser does not understand how to do compression. If I look at the response coming back, you'll see that it's a 200 OK, but you can see it's HTML below. It's no longer compressed like it was before. That's the power of breakpoints. I'm basically sitting between the browser and the server. I'm seeing a request come in on the fly, and I'm able to manually manipulate that request and make any changes I want. Possibly I may want to change the user agent to see if the server responds differently with what it gives back to the client. Anything sent on the request, including request body, the headers, I can make those modifications before it gets sent to the server. So it gives me a capability to make modifications and requests that would be very difficult to simulate in the browser itself, but is trivial when I'm able to set a breakpoint and manually alter the request before it's sent to the server. Well, that was a great example of making a breakpoint between when the browser is sending it so I can modify it before it goes to the server. Now we're going to look at another case where I want a breakpoint let the request go to the server as it normally would, but I want to make some changes manually at a breakpoint before it's sent back to the browser. I want to set up a new breakpoint specifically on the site CSS file. So I'm just going to click on that file and say add a new rule. So that will open it immediately and you can see the conditions for a get and for that specific URL. I'm going to change the rule name to break on site.css response. When Fiddler now sees a get request for that specific file, I want it to set a breakpoint again. In this case, I want it on before sending the response. So I want the site CSS request to go to the web server as it normally would, but when the response comes back from the server before it sends it to the client, I'm setting up a breakpoint so I can make some changes to that particular file. So I'll save this. I'm going to clear these sessions so we can see it as a fresh request. I can see that my rule is already enabled, so I'm going to go back to the browser we'll see that we have an indicator again that there's a breakpoint. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go to the inspectors and I can see that now the response is paused. What is that doing in this case? Well, as you can see, that site CSS file not being returned, first of all, is making the page be completely blank. So this is very useful for us in general to see if a request is delayed and is having an issue coming back. This is the, the experience that my customers are going to have. So that's concerning. 
Uh, there are techniques where I could choose to inline some of that CSS so I see something. But it's interesting to see that just while we're waiting for the server to specifically give that site CSS file back, that's actually blocking rendering. And to see why this would be the case, I went into Visual Studio Code and you can see the link for the CSS file. So as the browser is parsing the response, it hits that site CSS. Because that controls how things look, render, and layout, the browser does not want to start displaying or painting anything until that request finishes. So that's a high priority request. And we've seen that if the response does not come quickly, people are seeing a completely blank page. As we said, there's ways to fix that. I'm going to show you now where I set the breakpoint again, but I actually want to do some testing. I want to see what would happen if I modified this file. I want to do that, but you know, I'm on my own development machine particularly. Maybe I don't want to change CSS and send it through our publish process to see it in a stage environment, or I want to see what it would look like against the actual production website. Being able to set breakpoints and use Fiddler everywhere I can actually make the requests out to the site, but make changes on the fly manually when that breakpoint occurs. So let's look at that example. I have the request made, so if I go back to Fiddler Everywhere, again, I can see it waiting on that CSS file. So I'm gonna to go to the inspectors. I see that it's paused. I'm going to just change the actual color and see what happens on the client. So I'm gonna hit, just have that be red, and now let the response continue to the browser. So I can see that it's now been completed, and I scroll down. I'm able to make a change manually to that CSS file without having to actually deploy anything to a testing environment or anything. I can do very quick prototyping of changes to that CSS file, and how will that impact the client when that's been modified. For the last example, I'm going to also do a break on the response coming back. If you, again, have been doing web performance things, it's a good idea to use a CDN, Content Delivery Network, which has servers that are closer to where your customer is than possibly where your data center is. So they can just pull the files from somewhere closer. I've got it coded to be able to take advantage of a CDN by using a different host name when I reference those static files like images, CSS, JavaScript. Now what I want to see is what would the impact be if that host was particularly slow? What would the site experience be like? The first thing we'll do is disable our previous rule, and then we're going to go create a new rule. In this one, we'll call it break on CDN response. I want to look for, in this case, a host that's equal to the domain of my CDN. Now I have my rule, break on CDN response, where the host is equal to my CDN host. I want to set a breakpoint again, and I'm going to do it on the response. So before the response is sent to the client again, all of the requests that the browser is making out to my CDN server I want them all to be paused. So I'll save this. I can see that that rule is enabled now, so we'll go back to the client and see what this does. We've gone back to the browser and made the request for our web page. That page should be going through and getting back HTML, but if we take a look at Fiddler Everywhere, we'll see all of the indicators for those additional files are currently paused on breakpoints. So we can just select all of those. Now I can say, resume pause sessions. And we'll see that all of the ones I had highlighted have now been allowed to continue. One of those made an additional request for a font, so I'm just going to click on that and say resume as well. Now if we go back to the browser, we'll see that it works as expected. So this is just another example of testing out the impact. I like to do this with third-party vendors. So I can point to resources of theirs and I can see if they are not available, what kind of impact does that have on our site? Very often I'll see major impacts for painting or experience that occur because that third party is not responding. So that breakpoint was looking for anything that matches that host. So there were a number of resources waiting and they've got a convenient way to then 
highlight those and resume them all at once as you saw. So again, I hope you've seen throughout this video the power of Fiddler not just to watch traffic going back and forth, but to be able to actually modify that traffic either before it gets sent to the web server or on the way back from the server to the client. This opens so many opportunities for troubleshooting, testing quick fixes, etc. Breakpoints are a great feature in Fiddler Everywhere.